Don't encourage him when he comes on, will you? <laughs> what time is it now, Lindsay? Just on quarter past. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> September the 24th this year, a coachload of friends and myself went down to London, as we do about six times a year, on average, sort of once every two months, go down to see a show in London. Three hands up if you've ever been with me to the shows in London. Thank you, Ross. Well done. Thank you. Oh, look at them. Wonderful. We go there about half the price and we see some marvellous West End shows. And we were on the way September the 24th to see Shakespeare in Love. Thank you. You heard about it? Yeah. It's. Um, it's got five stars, all the critics have acclaimed it tremendously, and it always oh, was absolutely wonderful. It really was quite wonderful. It brought to life, have you been to the Globe, any of you? Yes. Yes. Been to the Globe, yeah, okay. Um, well, we've been down to the Globe several times, and then we sort of gave it a miss, because it's, it is an amazing building. And it was built as far as they possibly could, exactly as it was originally, which is a great thing to do. And it's wonderful to go and see it. But more deals. If you are tall, long-legged, or whatever, it's not quite such a good idea. Sorry, Glenn, sorry. But, um, yeah, the, the seating is just as it was. Well, we're all bigger and taller than they were in those days, so it does get a little bit difficult. But it's wonderful to see Mr. Shakespeare's plays done in the right way, done as they were originally, and in the same setting. So if you do get a chance, and I've been talking to Lindsay about it today, I think we're going to go down again. There's also, uh, next door to the Globe, and in, on the same sort of campus, there is a, a, a new theatre, the Sam Wallamaker Theatre, um, which is <coughs> candlelit. And this is fascinating, and I wonder if any of you... Do you know why we have three-act plays? Put your hands up on your side. You don't know. I'm going to tell you. Three-act plays, because one candle lights one act, and then it goes... So they have to change candles and put a new one in. And that second candle sees you through Act Two, and then it goes. <laughs> so they have to put a third one. I think that's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> I've been involved in the theatre all my life. I didn't know that. I often wondered why they had three acts. I thought it was perhaps to accommodate people who needed to dash somewhere or whatever. But no, it's all to do with the candles. So we're going to go down again. I made a big decision today, talking with Lindsay. We're going to give it a try again, my notes. If any of you are interested and can get to where the coaches start from, you're welcome to come with us. Just give me a ring and I'll tell you all about it. We go down about six times a year. I've already said that. Right, so we're there seeing Shakespeare in love. What time is it now, David? Uh, <laughs> just gone 20 past, ma'am. Just gone? 20 past. I've got 10 minutes to go. <laughs> right. So there we are in this theatre, all settling down, and the set was glorious. It looked just like what we imagined the globe was originally, and how they've already rebuilt the globe. Beautiful, with a sort of balcony-like structure, which can be used for all manner of things. And the actors are on stage, and there's one fellow sitting at a table scribbling. Who do you think it might be? Mm. What's the play called? Shakespeare. Who do you think it might be? Shakespeare. Well done this side. Half the point to you. Um, yeah, Will Shakespeare sitting there in the pub yard. You know, plays originally were performed in pub yards. You know where they have the, you think of any old pub that you know. Um, there's one in Newark. What's that one called in Newark, Lindsay? Never mind, you're too late. Um, there's always an archway, and the, the horses and the carriages and things went through the arch. You know, don't you, darling? You're not there. Coaching in. Pardon? Coaching in. Coaching <laughs> in. Thank you. Um, yeah, and they used, to, they used to pull in there, and there'd probably be a cart of some description in the middle, and the actors would clamber up onto the cart and perform. And anybody who wanted to see and hear would gather round, like this. 
yeah, and up on the balconies where the, um, the rooms were for hire, and so on and so on. That's how the theatre started. Uh, yeah, so there we are, there sits Will, scribbling away, and a little crowd gathering, and it made me think that, in fact, there's not a lot of difference between Will Shakespeare and the plays he put on. There's not much difference between him and Sylvia Jackson and the plays she put on. <laughs> I'm not joking. I mean, do you know how he got his cast? The butcher would come along and say, I fancy being in your next play, Will. There'll be a couple of chops in it for you. It really did happen. There would be an odd one or two who were a bit better than the others. Perhaps they'd done a few more plays. Um, and they would be the people who would go for I am available. And so, okay, well, we'll get them. Why did he write the plays? He wrote the plays so that he could live, so that he could buy food and live. That's precisely what it was all about. And I'm pretty well the same. You would have one spec. Oh, I've got to go back. That man bosses me. Please don't get too much of it. It's depressing. <laughs> anyway, okay. So there he sits. Shall, shall, shall I? And a voice said, "Compare thee to a summer's day." <laughs> I admit, so moi. Oh, how embarrassing. Good job at all, Dawson. And that's what it was. And the only way I know it, because it's such a lovely sonnet, it's one of my favourites. So in a minute I'm going to recite it for you. How many minutes have I got to go? Two. Two? <laughs> I guess that's an English shout. Well, be twelve. Right. This is the sonnet which I happened to say to my daughter at her wedding. Thank you, Mother. <laughs> I don't know whether you're welcome or not. <laughs> Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime, too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed. And every fair, from fair sometime declines, by chance, or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag Thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe and eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Gentlemen, with great love and pleasure, Chatsworth Players present Gaslight. Yeah.